So for the last uh, few weeks that I've been ministering, uh, I ministered to you on Matthew chapter 13, uh, verse 10, and uh, it's the title of the message is being, uh, it's given to you to know. And so Jesus, I'm going to do a little bit of, what do you call it? Review, that's the word. And uh, then I want to move on to some other things tonight. So in Matthew 13, verse 10, this is Jesus talking, and he had been talking in parables to the larger crowd. Then he said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. They asked him, why did he talk in parables? And so this was his answer to them. And um, verse 16, he says, and blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear, for they hear. And he didn't say maybe he said, blessed are your eyes for you see and blessed are your ears for you hear. And then um, he said mysteries, that word mysteries there, we've looked at it, and it means secret or hidden things and uh, a revelation that's in the mind of God, truth being revealed. And so there's some things that God wanted to to reveal to us. So we looked in Daniel chapter 2 and saw that the king had a, a mystery that needed to be revealed. And so Daniel and the three Hebrew children went ahead and uh, prayed and asked the Lord what the dream was and the interpretation of the dream to give it to the king. And so in that, Daniel tells the king, he said, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets in the latter days at the end of days. So in their mind, they were in the end of days, the latter days. And we're, you know, here we are a little further along than they were. How about that? And uh, so they were uh, getting information from the Lord of how to navigate, how to traverse where they were in their time. And we also said that they did things a lot externally. They didn't have the spirit of God living on the inside of them. They had to rely on uh, the prophet, the priest or the king to hear from the Lord, to impart things to them. Or, um, you know, they would um, God would give them dreams or visions and things like that in order to get uh, information from him. But in the New Testament, Jesus said is given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And not any, not that he even just said that, but he gave us a way to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And that is through the Holy Spirit. In first Corinthians chapter 14, verse two, for he who speaks in a tongue that does not speak to men, uh, they do not speak to men, but to God for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. That's that same word, secrets or hidden things. The Amplified says of that, he utters secret truths and hidden things, not obvious to the understanding. So there are things that we don't know in our understanding about our life or about our family, about our kids, about our finances, about our job, about our future. And so if we will pray in the, uh, in other tongues, God can reveal those things to us that we need to know. And so uh, not to take a long time in uh, review. But in John's gospel, in uh, the chapters 14 through 17, we looked at that last time and how Jesus was on his way out. And so he gave them instruction in uh, these chapters in the book of John. In John 14, 17, I'm just going to read a piece of it. He says, but you know him for he dwells in you and will be in you. And so the Holy Spirit, he says, you know him. For he dwells with you and he will be in you. John 14, 26. But the helper... He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So we have to put something in for him to remember, bring to our remembrance of, right? And so he has to, we have to put something in so he can draw something out. Praise the Lord. And in John 16, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient, be good to help, profitable. One translation says, it's your advantage that I go away. So Jesus is telling us, it is to your advantage that I go away. We know that when Jesus walked on the earth, he was just one body. Now, one body that did a lot wherever he was, but he couldn't be everywhere all the time. So he said it was expedient for him to go away so that the Holy Spirit could come and the Holy Spirit can live on the inside of each and every one of us. Amen. So he could be in multiple places at one time. And so it was to our advantage The disciples didn't think so. They didn't want him to go away. But he said it's to our advantage that he goes away. And one of the things that will happen when he does go away and uh, and the Holy Spirit comes in uh, John 16, 13 through 15, he says, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Classic. But when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth, the, the whole full truth. 
for he will not speak in his own, on his own message, on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the father. He will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare it to you. The things that are to come that will happen in the future. Are there some things you need to know about your future? When we have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us and he can tell us those things, announce and declare them to us. 14, he will honor and glorify me because he will take of, receive of, draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose and transmit it to you. Everything that the father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said that he, the spirit, will take the things that are of mine and will reveal, declare, and disclose it to you. So we have, and transmit it to you. So we have an advantage of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us because he reveals things that we don't know, hidden things that are secret things that are hidden for us, not from us, that he can reveal to us. Maybe uh, you want to buy a car, and you don't know necessarily maybe where to go, what kind of car to buy. Uh, how it works, all of that kind of stuff. The Holy Ghost can help you with that. He's helped me buy several cars. Hallelujah. And you may think the Holy Ghost don't care about cars. Yes, he does. He cares about you. So if you go out and buy a clunker, you're going to be on the side of the road or have a wreck. He cares about you. Plus, that steals time away from you to do other things. Amen. So you want to buy a house. I remember uh, my very first house that I bought. And uh, uh, so I was driving on a, I think it was on a Thursday and just, it just like a coin just dropped down on the inside of me. I knew it was time to do it. So I, I called a real estate agent and I said, I think, I think we're supposed to do this. And so within 15 minutes, she put me in, in touch with a mortgage uh, loan officer and within 30 minutes I was approved. And so the next uh, next day, she said, okay, I've got some houses lined up, and let's go look. And so I said, look, uh, Pastor Mark keeps us pretty busy around here, so I don't have several days to be looking for a house or weeks or what have you. So let's pray and believe God that we'll find the house today. And so um, we prayed in the car, and the fourth house that I walked into, I walked across the threshold, and I knew in here that was my house. I started tearing up, started crying. And, uh, and so we, uh, put the, put the offer in and I was under contract by six o'clock that night. And so, uh, I mean, it was, uh, it had more things that I, I, I just wanted to be able to have a house. I just wanted to have a house, <laughs> but he did exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. Amen. And plus I had a yard. You have a house. When you have a house, you have a yard. And it was a little bit too big for me. (laughs) Uh, And so uh, I was in that house, I believe, three years, three or four years. But um, when I moved into that house, um, I think it was in a time of prayer. I was praying, and I saw this tall man standing up by my mailbox with white hair. And uh, someone, someone else that was on staff was thinking about buying a house and they were, you know, just kind of, what do I need to move? Uh, how are we going to do this? Not sure if it's time to put the trigger on it and everything. And I said, if I can get a house, anybody can get a house. And I said, I've already seen the person who's going to buy my house. And I heard myself say that out of my mouth. And it was the tall person standing up by my mailbox with the white hair. That person ended up being Pastor Mark's dad and mom buying my house. And so I was up preaching one night, Wednesday night, over at the A-frame, and I looked over at him and saw the white hair. This was already after they had bought the house. I looked right at him and went, he's the tall man with the white hair at the mailbox. It, It never even registered me after we went through all of that, that he was the one that I saw when I was praying that was going to buy my house. So God cares about those things, cares about the things that you care about. Amen. So it's to our advantage. He helps us. One of the DNA markers of Cornerstone Word of Life Church and your pastors is that they uh, are being led by the spirit is a characteristic of this church and uh, and on their life. And so um, that should be something that you strive after. And that should be a part of your life as well. And, uh, and it's for you because it's open for uh, all of us and for any, any one of us. So praying in other tongues and praying in the spirit is an advantage to us. 
It helps us personally in our life. And so um, there's a, uh, an account in uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. And this is an account where uh, the Syrian army is planning to go down to, uh, to kill the or invade Israel. And so the king is talking about what they're going to do and where they're going to go. Then Elijah, <laughs> Elijah gets an, um, a vision or gets something from the Lord about what they're getting ready to do and tells the king of Israel. And so the king of Israel, where they were going to go down to, the city that they were going to go down to, they watched and made sure that when they went near there or by there, that the Syrian army wasn't there. And so... <laughs> So the king of this, over Syria kept saying, so, uh, is anybody going to tell me who is, who's on my cabinet that's for Israel? And one of the guys spoke up and said, no one, sir. He said, there is a prophet that hears you talking in your bedchamber and he's revealing the secrets to the king of Israel. And so God cared about the, the, the children of Israel. So this king says, okay, let's go get him. So they go out to get Elisha, and so the servant sticks his head out the tent, and he looks up and he sees the Syrian army surrounding them. And so he tells Elijah, what are we going to do? You ever been surrounded? <laughs> Wondering what you're going to do? Hallelujah. And uh, so Elijah says, Lord, he prayed, and he said, he told the servant, there's more that be with us than be with them. And then he prayed and asked the Lord to open his eyes so that he could see. And when he opened his eyes, he saw some, some backup. Let's, <laughs> let's just say that <laughs> behind him. And then Elijah prayed again uh, and asked the Lord to blind the Syrian army. And then he led them to another city. <laughs> So he took them off to Samaria, I believe it was. And so and then he prayed again and asked the Lord to open his eyes, open their eyes. And then they look up and they're in another city. So the king says, oh, okay, do I kill them? And uh, Elijah said, no, go ahead and feed them, give them some water. And he said, send them on their way. So they go back to the king of Syria and <laughs> they don't even know how they got where they are. And so it says that they never bother Israel again. <laughs> was it to their advantage to know the God who reveals secrets? Amen. And that's an Old Testament uh, account. But still, God cared about Israel enough that he revealed the strategies of the enemy and what they were going to do to come against them uh, and undid them to protect the children of Israel. Hallelujah. So God wants to do those kinds of things for us. So it's to our advantage. And so we looked at some scriptures real quick. I'm going to go through rapid fire. Proverbs 3, 5, and 7. And uh, 1 John 5, uh, I'm sorry, 1 John 2, uh, 20 and 27 says that we have an unction or knowing from the Holy One within and we know all things in an anointing. Uh, John 10, 4 and 5, I am his sheep. I know his voice and I follow him. And we looked at Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. And that's where your homework was. Anybody been working on your homework? Anybody getting answers from your homework? It's a little less than before, than the earlier. <laughs> so keep working on it. The God of secrets who wants to reveal to you your life or whatever answer that you put on that sheet that you're asking for. He wants to reveal that to you. Amen. He wants you to know. And so with the Ephesian prayer, we talk a lot about Brother Hagen around here, but I've been listening to different ones here lately and listening to him some. And he said the Ephesians prayer, he, he said, I don't know what I had been preaching before I started reading the Ephesians prayer. He read the Ephesians prayer and he said he did it for six months and uh, he would do it at least once a day, but he would do it, try to do it at least three times a day. And he said he did it for six months and he recommended anybody else to do it for six months. And he said the revelation that come pouring out of him and that after that six month period of time was phenomenal. And so it is worth it to us to read that that passage or, or pray that passage over ourselves that we uh, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him uh, would um, uh, be our uh, knowledge will be enlightened. The eyes of our understanding be enlightened that we might know the hope to which we've been called to. What are the riches of his glory and inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of his power that is to us who believe. 
And so it's an advantage that we are to have. So another advantage of having uh, praying in other tongues and uh, praying in the spirit is that he shows us things about other people's lives. Uh, we just read the account or talked about the account with Elijah where it was protecting his life and the guy that was with him. Uh, I shared some things last week or some things, you know, that how it affected my life personally. But uh, there are some things that the Lord wants to do to help you with other people. Now, Brother Hagin tells this account or has told this account. It wouldn't be good if he was telling us right now because he went to heaven in 2003. So if he's telling us stuff in person, that's not good. So, <laughs> so one of the things he used to tell us about or a story that an account that he told us about, he was staying in a pastor's home and he heard the wife just screaming downstairs and she had just gotten a phone call and it was a phone call from uh, one of her children and their grandchild had was on their way to them and had gotten on a, uh, and well, they didn't know what had happened at the time, but they called and said that uh, they uh, missed the bus or something had happened. They weren't on the bus that they were supposed to be on. And so this grandmother is just hysterical. So he sent his wife down there to find out what was happening, what was going on with him. And so uh, she told him. And so just on the inside, he just checked on the inside and said, She's all right. And the lady said, well, did the Lord tell you that? And he said, no, I've just got a peace on the inside. I know she's all right. And so she went back to screaming. And uh, and so he said, sister, sister, calm down. He said, your your granddaughter's all right. She said, but the Lord didn't tell you that. And uh, he said, I go just as much about what the Lord doesn't say as what he does say. And so she said, he said, I'm telling you, the child will be fine. And then uh, shortly after they gave, they got a call and said that she got on the wrong bus, ended up somewhere. And they're rerouting her to get her where she needs to be. So that affected someone's life. Uh, maybe affect people that <clears throat> something that may be going on with someone that you know or that you're talking to somebody that you work with want to take you to lunch and they are they're asking advice about something you know I've had lunch with people or dinner or meals with people and uh, just sitting there talking the Spirit of God uh, just having a conversation the Spirit of God gives them their answer and sometimes I don't even realize it I've had people come back to me later and say Hey, you remember that time we went out to eat or we went to get something to drink or what have you? And you said such and such. I don't remember saying such and such. But the spirit of God knew what they needed and got to them their answer to what they needed. And so he the advantage that we have is that we may not have the answer, but we know where the answer is. There was um, when I was in Bible school, there was a young lady that came uh, to one of the instructors and she had had a horrible life and things were just, I mean, just awful. And she was having a hard time getting past it and getting over it. And so the, she came to one of the instructors and she said, can you help me? And the instructor said, no, I can't help you, but I know where to take you. And she said, let's go to the throne of God and God can help you there. You may not know the answer, but you know the answer giver. And if we can get them to them. God can get them their answers. Amen. And so there are uh, people or uh, uh, things in, in, in folks' life. And Brother Hagin even said of that case, he said, I didn't get that because I'm a prophet. I got that because I pray in the spirit. And so, you know, I don't know. There could be prophets here in this room. But the, the greater advantage is that you're a believer. And the Lord and the word of God says that you can know. The things that are out in the future. You can know. Um, in uh, uh, John uh, 14, 17, it says, you know him because he's, he's with you and he's in you. So we don't have to necessarily stand in an office necessarily. We can know things. Um, I was prayer coordinator at a church in Nashville. And uh, so I was sitting in a meeting one day. Uh, I think it was Dr. Varallo's meeting in uh, Charlotte, um, in South Carolina. So I'm sitting there and listening to her minister. And then all of a sudden, I see the car of one of our church members pass before me. And I think, well, that's odd. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's like this car is going down this road where there's construction. You know, those, um, those horses they have with the flashing lights on them and caution and all of that. And so um, I saw uh, this lady's husband driving down this road in that car. 
And, uh, and so he's not seeing the caution signs. And so he just continues to drive it on. And so, um, <clears throat> I sit there and I start praying in the, in the Holy ghost. So when I get back to, uh, get back home, I go to the pastor and I said, uh, this is what I saw. These are your sheep. Here you go. Here's the information. You do what you need to do to it. He said, "Uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh, not happening. He said, the Lord showed it to you. You need to ask the Lord, what do you need to do about that? So uh, he put it back out over my court. And uh, so I went to pray and and asked the Lord, okay, you showed me this. What am I supposed to do with it? And so he said not to tell anyone else. And, um, And he just wanted me to pray. And so as the weeks progress on, I get a revelation of what that was all about. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to a fast food restaurant through the drive through and I went to place my order and I heard the voice of someone that I knew. And I thought, how is this possible? So when I lived here and I was in college, I worked at a restaurant here in town and uh, the lady who was my assistant manager here is now the assistant manager at this particular store. So I hear a voice and I called her name and she re- remembered me. So I drove around, we got out, went in, hugged and all this kind of stuff. And so she proceeds to tell me that she's in a relationship with someone and called their name. And it just happened to be the person that I saw driving in this car through the caution lights and stuff going down the road. And so I went, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> and so I get back in my car and call my pastor and I said, okay, this is what's happening. This is one un- unfolding. And he said, what did the Lord tell you to do? He said, pray on it. I went, oh God. And so <clears throat> I continue to pray on it. And so things just started unraveling in that mess. I mean, in a mess and uh, could have potentially been a horrible mess. And so, um, and this was one of my friends. And so in a way I felt bad about not saying anything, but the Holy Spirit didn't give me the license to go ahead and say something. So he just said, pray on it. So what I started doing is just kept praying on it. So as things are progressing, he's breaking off the relationship. She went nuts, just nuts, was going to sue him, uh, you know, sue him for harassment because he's her boss. And, uh, and I mean, it just went, it went crazy. When she went to the judge, they went to end it up in court. And when they went before the judge, the judge, rather than, uh, siding in with what, you know, because she was consenting in this relationship, uh, he deemed her unstable and that she needed help, uh, mental help. And so that whole thing fell apart. They're still married today. Their marriage is strong today. They're still in church, all of that kind of stuff. But to this day, to the best of my knowledge, she doesn't know that I knew. So when God reveals things to you, what do you do with it? You ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do with this information? How do you want me to use this information? And it could be information to help someone and, uh, you know, and, and, When God trusts you with his secrets, he reveals things to you with it. And how you handle them will let you know whether you get to do more with him. Whether he trusts you with more. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God is wanting to help people. He wanted to give answers to people. And, um, And so he'll reveal things to us to help us. And it says that the, the gifts of the spirit or the spirit of seeing and knowing is basically the word of knowledge and, uh, and the, uh, the word of wisdom and sometimes the discerning of spirits. And so it says that of those gifts in first Corinthians chapter 12, that they are to profit us. They are to profit us, not to make us scared, not to make us woo woo, but they are to profit us. That's why he's revealing things because it's things we don't know. We don't know what's happening out there and that might hurt us. We don't know if we go down this certain road. I had a friend years ago. She was going to our church. And so she got in her car and the Lord said, don't go the normal way. You go home, go a different way. And so she said, Lord, I don't feel like going that way tonight. You just cover me. So he was telling her this to profit her. 
And she said, just cover me with the blood. Just cover me. And so you don't ignore (laughs) when he's talking to you that way. Trust me. You don't ignore that. He's trying to help you. So a little while later, I get a phone call. I'm in an accident in such and such a place. And then when I get there, she tells me what the Lord told her. And she just said, just cover me. Well, we don't override the leading of the spirit just with a confession. The leading of the spirit is a lot of time in the moment. He's trying to get our attention about something. And so we follow that. Amen. Hallelujah. So when um, so answers sometimes will come several ways. He'll talk to us in an audible voice. He'll talk to us. Sometimes he'll send an uh, angelic visitation, a dream or a vision through prophecy, tongues and interpretation of tongues. But more than anything, it'll be the still small voice on the inside. Remember, he wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in all the activity that was going on in the cave. He was in the still small voice. And we call it in the New Testament, the inward witness. We follow that inward witness. And so, um, oh, let's see here. So the spirit of seeing and knowing uh, goes into operation. When we pray in other tongues, when we yield, yield ourselves to the spirit of God, and um, a lot of times he'll reveal things to us. And, um, uh, you know, what we'll do is we'll pray in tongues more fervently. But a lot of times when he's revealed stuff to us is to take our authority over something. And so, you know, a tornado coming towards, towards, uh, to, towards Huntsville, we all just pray in tongues real fast. <laughs> Cause when we pray in tongues, we're talking to God. We're not addressing the tornado, but you have authority. We have authority. So we address the tornado with our authority in the word of God. So um, I had heard this account before. And then just recently, uh, someone else was telling the account and got a little bit more detail. There was a minister and his family that were on a plane. And I think there were six of them in the plane, and, uh, including the, the pilot and co-pilot. And so they were getting ready to take off from a ministry uh, uh, play event that they were on. So the pilot didn't refuel the other tank. He was going to use the reserve tank. So when he took off the reserve tank, he switched, uh, kicked the switch over to the reserve tank and it wouldn't go over. So he wasn't that far in the air. So when he realized that the reserve tank is not coming up, he tell, he looks back at everybody and he says, pray, we're going down. So everybody started rapid fire praying in other tongues except for the co-pilot. And that's the reason why we have the story. He said, I took authority. I said, Satan, you take your hands off of my life. My life belongs to God. And, uh, and so he's doing that, but everybody else prayed in tongues. Rapid fire. You know how we do, right? We call it a robo tongues. And so everybody else on that plane died, except for the one who took authority over his life. So when he reveals that and God reveals things to this is a natural situation here. But when he reveals things, we just don't take off in other tongues because in, in, uh, in the New Testament, in first Corinthians, it tells us that when you're praying in an unknown tongue, you are talking to God. So you're not <laughs> at God, you know, you take authority over the situation. Amen. Use your authority. So. <clears throat> So praying more fervently in tongues does not is not how you deal with it. Tongues is talking to God. We are to use and take our authority over whatever he's showing us and what's happening. So how do we what do we do to sharpen ourselves? Well, those scriptures that I gave you last week or some. But uh, this at the beginning of this year, uh, the Holy Ghost told pastor to uh, teach more on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, especially in our saturation meetings. And you've seen some amazing things that have been happening. Even some of our children are getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so um, what is he doing? He's trying to get us ready. He's trying to help us. And um, and so. uh let's see, I'm going real fast here. Sorry. One of the things uh, you can do is, you know, you may not necessarily have an hour or 30 minutes every day to spend, but where, as you're going about your way, pray in tongues as you go. I pray in tongues in the car. 
um, you know, driving around town. If I'm standing at the sink, washing dishes, I uh, pray in tongues. I ask the Holy Ghost to remind me. Uh, sitting at the traffic light, I pray in other tongues. And even last year, I had put in the practice of it while I was there. The light lasts, what, a, a minute and a half? Two minutes, however long it does. So I, I say, Lord, I'm praying for, when I stop at a traffic light, I'm praying for pastors. And so I pray in other tongues for them. And so, um, you know, we just went on a trip with a Bernie Daylight group this weekend. And so when I wasn't talking to somebody under my breath, I'm praying in other tongues. So you can just, as you're sitting at your desk, as you're, if you're in your car driving for, from one appointment to the other, pray in other tongues. Just keeping yourself sensitive to him so uh, that at a moment's notice, we can move however he wants us to move. Amen. And hear him clearly. Now, another advantage for us, it is for us to pray in uh, other tongues or have the spirit of seeing and knowing operating with us. Um, uh, Reverend Ann Durant was just here, and so she talked about the spirit of seeing and knowing, and she talked about uh, us seeing what pastors see and knowing what they know. So whenever they have vision, whenever they have direction, she was talking about the spirit of God for us to know and see the same things that they're seeing and they're knowing. And what does that have to do with? It has to do with vision. And so the shoe drive we just had this past Sunday. So you guys got behind the vision of that. That's seeing what they see, seeing their heart uh, or the heart of God in them about why we did it. And so you gave money towards that. And we, you know, those kids were blessed beyond measure. Amen. And so uh, when the next building comes, the one he's been talking but not talking about <laughs> back here, when that happens, rather than we don't need a new building, why are we building? We just got to do building. No, you get in agreement with and see the same things that they're seeing. Why? Because we'll all see, Isaiah said, we'll all see and flow together. And you with unity, things flow better. Amen. That's where God puts his anointing in. Not. We'll see and flow together. And God's anointing, his grace will be in there on it. Amen. Man, got lost to cover here. Praise the Lord. Um, a couple times ago when I um, played the video of Mark, um, Marty Blackwelder, in that same service, Brother Hagen gave this prophecy. He said, speaking by the spirit, not just speaking words out of your own mind or thinking, but speaking by the spirit, words are inspired by the spirit of God. Words that well up from within you, out of your spirit, given by to you by the Holy Spirit. These words spoken boldly bring forth great happenings. Speaking by the spirit, <clears throat> speaking by the spirit, and so the glory of God shall come into manifestation uh, and some will see like a cloud that hangs over the heads of people. Others may see, may not see anything, but they sense the mighty move of the spirit. Speaking by his spirit, yield or not tongue unto the Holy Ghost. But you see, taking time to pray in the spirit, taking time to pray in other tongues will get you tuned up, will edify you and get your tongue hooked up to your spirit so that when he who dwells in your spirit can give utterance, then he takes over. And, you're speak, and you speak out what he says, not what you think. You speak out what he wants. Hallelujah. And so the spirit of seeing and knowing comes into a greater measure or manifestation, and it, it shall come. But all of these, all nine of the manifestation of this uh, worketh the one self-same spirit. And the same spirit, the inspirational gifts, men, women, speaking by the spirit, by prophecy, inspire utterances, by tongues and interpretation, shall bring forth marvelous statements and bring to pass and bring into being in this sense realm where men can see and know the operation of the spirit of God and the manifestation of the spirit of God and the demonstration of the spirit of God. So rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. The spirit of seeing and knowing is available for those who pray in the spirit. Not for certain ones, not just for ministers, for those who will avail themselves to praying in the spirit. Now, I'm going to try to do this real quick. Uh, um, in Luke chapter 8, 
This is another version of that same scripture in Matthew where Jesus is talking to the uh, disciples talking about mysteries. And he said to you, it has been given to you the know to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus was always talking to them about the kingdom. What are the, the things of the kingdom, how the kingdom functioned, how the kingdom operated. And so in first Corinthians chapter two, verse seven and eight, let's look there. And I'm going to read it out of the NIV. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden. So mysteries again have been hidden and that the God destined for our glory before the time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So God hides things in mysteries or in secrets so that the enemy won't know what's happening and what's going on and thwart the plan. So the enemy thought he orchestrated that whole deal with Jesus being dead until Jesus woke up and took his keys away from him. In his own house. He thought he had done him undone until, you know, life started happening down there and he spoiled principalities and made a show of him openly. And he took the keys of hell, death in the grave. Amen. And rose up victoriously. He wasn't parading around then, was he? (laughs) Hallelujah. But God hid that in a mystery. The devil thought he had won on Calvary that day. But what he didn't know, he played right into the plans of God for redemption. Hallelujah. So he hides things for us. Uh, And then you ever had God do like a treasure hunt with you? He won't reveal the whole thing. He'll tell you a part. part, uh, Paul said we know in part. We see in part. We know in part. He'll give you a clue. And then you walk through that clue. And then he'll show you something else like a treasure hunt. Um, in um, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven, this is Jesus talking again about the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which is found a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he, it, he, uh, over it, he goes and sells all that he has to buy that field. And so he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And in other parts, in other parables, he talks about your heart being the soil or the field where the seed of the word of God is planted, right? And so your heart is the soil. We even confess that when pastors preach it. He has us uh, uh, confess that. So the treasure is in us. So this treasure that's hidden is in us. And the Holy Spirit, as we're praying in other tongues or in the spirit, that treasure is being uncovered and revealed. Whatever it is about whatever area or part of your life that you need to know, that treasure is in us. And in First Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 16 and 16, 19 says, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives on the inside of you. So the treasure of him lives in us. Amen. And so as we're praying in the Holy Ghost, that treasure, we're pulling out that treasure on the inside of us. Glory to God. So our heart is the soil. And so that that um, that mystery or that treasure is being revealed. So our human spirit, Mark chapter four tells us that is where that ground, where the spirit of God is. And that treasure in us is the Holy Spirit. In second Corinthians four, I'm doing rapid fire here. Second uh, Corinthians four, six. It goes and verse seven talks about we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. So there's a treasure on the inside of us. Colossians talks about in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in us, in Christ, in us. So there's a puzzle or there's a treasure hunt or there's something to be revealed on the inside of us. First Corinthians two, seven through 12. And we, I think we've gone over this before, but it says, no, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God designed for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written. No, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. These are the things that God has revealed to us. So he has revealed those things to us. Hallelujah. So God has revealed some things to us. 
uh, and things that are not seen, things that are not heard, things that we haven't even thought about. The spirit searches the deep things of God, it says. Uh, those things, uh, we might know, um, we might know a few things, but he knows a lot of things. And so we want to search on the inside of him. For verse 11, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of God within him? So he gives us a clue um, or again, those treasures that he's looking at. And our spirit is when he comes to live on the inside of us, our spirit and his spirit is so intertwined. And then our soul and our spirit are so intertwined that Hebrews chapter four says that it takes the word of God to, dis, to, to divide it out. So sometimes you might know some you go, is that me? Is that God? Is that Memorex? Is no, I guess. but you know. <laughs> Because your soul and spirit are so closely connected, it takes the word of God to divide that out to know whether this is God, whether this is me, uh, whether this is my soul. And so verse 11, for who knows a person's thoughts except uh, their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of this world. Aren't you glad? But the spirit who is from God. So that we might understand what God has freely given us. So he's given us some things in verse 13. This is what we speak, not in words taught as by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. This is the NIV of that same uh, passage. So what are those spirit taught words? Again, we talked about in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 that when our spirit prays, we're, we're speaking in an unknown tongue and we're speaking unto God. And so spirit taught words are unknown words that we're prayed unto him. And then because he's in us, we're in him. In John 17, it says that we're in him and he's in us. And we, and so we're all connected here. And so as we're praying in other tongues that we don't understand, he reveals things. He shows us things about whatever we're, maybe even something that we not even prayed about. Or we're concerned about, but it concerns him and he reveals it to us. Praise the Lord. So Paul is saying that when I pray in on the tongue, uh, the tongues, I'm praying spiritual words. I know people get up, uh, get all uptight about the, the tongue and how it sounds and all that, but we have been given an advantage. We have been given a treasure. We've been given a strategy on the inside of us. To overcome some things that are in this natural world. Praise the Lord. With the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. And so, you know, he's already been where we're going. That's why he's called the guide. You ever been on a whitewater rafting trip or, you know, on a uh, go to a museum or something? Don't go to Ruby Falls. I'm sorry, y'all. But <laughs> unless it's rain heavily, don't go to Ruby Falls. <laughs> because it becomes a trickle when you get down there. And so you go all with a guide all the way down there to see Ruby Falls. And Ruby Falls is a drizzle. <laughs> and so you're leaving Chattanooga. Thank you for coming to Ruby Falls. We didn't see falls. We saw a drizzle. <laughs> but the guide is in there to help us. And so when you're on that adventure, the guide because he's already been there, shows you where to go, where to step, the where to stay, where to go, uh, go back. <laughs> Amen. So the guide lives on the inside of us. So I'm sorry I'm throwing this at you at rapid fire. I'm trying to get you out of here. Romans says, when we don't know things or we don't know how to pray as we are, we have help on the inside to pray out the things and mysteries that we don't know but there's someone who knows the mind of God. And then uh, John 16, it says that he will take of what is God's, what's in the Father, and will show it unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we don't have to uh, walk down here with blindfolds on in the dark. And where are we going? Because we got a God. He said, the spirit of man is the cannon of the Lord, stretching the inward parts of the belly. He's in there. Your head may be going, I don't know. Uh, Jehoshaphat said, I don't know, but I'm looking to you. And how do we look to him? We look right here. Amen. Hallelujah. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Woohoo. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14, 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies, builds up himself. 
uh, but he who prophesies edifies the church. That word build, uh, edifies there is build up, but it also means instruction. So when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, we're getting instruction. We're building ourselves up, but it also means that we're getting wisdom or instruction from him on what to do. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit, he can give us glimpses. He gives us pictures. Uh, uh, I like what Marty says. He gives us divine cues about what uh, what we need to do, what we not, don't need to do uh, regarding things in our life. And uh, that's a help to us. <laughs> give you this real quick. When I first started here uh, at the church, before that, I worked for AT&T Wireless. And I think I worked for them from April till about October. And during that time, they didn't take taxes out. For me, and um, so come the new year, I, I look on my W two and there's no taxes on it taken out. So they, you know, I find out how much it is, and uh, <laughs> it might as well have been fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> uh, for I didn't have any of it, and so uh, I didn't know exactly what to do about that. So on a Sunday morning. We had a guest minister in. We had a ladies advance that weekend, and someone came to minister. And I had not given any money towards the guest speaker yet. So I'm sitting in my seat, and Jim is up doing the offering. And when he's doing the offering, he goes to um, the account where they need to pay taxes. The disciple needs to pay taxes. Jesus tells him to go fishing. And the first fish, take the coin out of his mouth, go pay your taxes and mine. And so I'm hearing him say that. So as I'm hearing him say that, the Spirit of God says, don't put your uh, gift for the guest minister in the offering. What I want you to do is when you leave here, go to the ATM, get money, put it in the envelope, mail it to them today. That mail ain't running today, but he tells me to do it, I mean, right away. And so uh, so I follow his instruction. And so... Um, I didn't know it had anything to do with the taxes, you know. And so I think it was the next week, I, in between services, I go in my office, and on my desk is sitting there a Bible. And uh, it's in a box. It's the King James Amplified Parallel. And so I'm thinking, I didn't tell anybody I need a Bible. or I, You know, I wasn't sure. Mine was falling apart, so I, I really didn't need one. But I didn't say anything. I didn't think I said anything to anybody. And so I would turn to walk out of my office, and the Spirit of God said, pick the Bible up out of the box. And so when I picked the Bible up out of the box, there was an envelope underneath it. And when I opened up the envelope, it was the money that I needed for my taxes. <laughs> and some left over to, to put into the offering, you know, my 10%. And I couldn't have done that, but then the Lord said, the reason why that happened is because you obeyed me when he spoke to me in service that day to go do that. He took care of my taxes so he can take. That's a strategy that I could not have come up with anything better than that. I got a Bible to boot out of it, you know, all. But that was a tight spot for me. You know, you hear those stories, they're going to come get you, knock on your door, and cart you off. You know how they used to do with the kids, you know, uh, when they couldn't pay their bills and stuff, they would put their kids in prison and stuff. And so, <laughs> so I had this picture of being carted off by the IRS or something, you know, and I don't know. But the Lord took care of that. Amen. And so there are strategies, things that he wants to do to take care of stuff in your life as well. You may be in a tight spot and you think, man, I don't see. And he is a God of impossibilities. Amen. That's what he specializes in. So we come up against a Red Sea situation. <laughs> you took us from eating eat leeks and onions and brought us out here to die. Up against a Red Sea and impassable impossible situation and with the blast of his nostrils he opened up the sea and they walked over on dry ground and that's not just a story that's an account of him of how he wants to do things for us but i believe that what he's trying to do is stir us up so the impossibilities so the things of the spirit that are happening that he wanted to do in our lives he's stirring us up so we can access those things more amen the kingdom belongs to us. 
We are a part of the kingdom. And so when Jesus came up against impossibilities like paying his taxes, he didn't think, I need to go get a part-time job. I need to see if Peter will let me work on his boat. Maybe I can clean the nets or something like that. What he, what he did was access the provision of the kingdom. Okay, Father, we're up against something impossible right now. What do we do? And he said, I didn't do, I don't do anything that the Father, I don't see the Father do. I don't say anything. I don't hear the Father say. So he had to hear the Father say, tell Peter to go fishing. And the first fish, the first one, not the 30th fish, the first fish. How did he know it was the first fish? Because the Father told him. The first fish, he's got a gold coin in his mouth. Take that coin, go pay your taxes and pay mine. Uh, if we got 5,000 people who need to eat. and We don't have food. We got a little boy who has his lunch. Jesus took that food and blessed it and felt 5,000 men, it says, could have been upwards of 15 to 20,000 children and women, you know, included in that. And they had food left over. And he did it again for 4,000. This is not just stuff we, little Bible stories we read in the Bible. These are things that he's wanting to do with us right now today. I want to see it happen more in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, those not missing those divine cues, us being sensitive to hear his voice and the things that he's wanting to tell us and show us uh, that um, that he has a store for us. Man, I got so much more. Praise the Lord. I preach myself happy. Praise the Lord. I've gotten stirred up about it. Amen. In Acts chapter one, Jesus said to the disciples, why don't you guys go ahead and stand up? <clears throat> Jesus said in Acts chapter one, and I'll read that and we'll, we'll take off here. <sighs> and being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Jesus did, not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you have heard of me for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and all the ends of the earth. Now he tells them, you stay in Jerusalem till you receive this power. It was imperative for them to stay there to receive this power of the Holy Spirit and not go anywhere else until it happened. There was an urgency about it. And there was an urgency in them because they went to the upper room and stayed up there until that power came. Hallelujah. So if it was imperative then at the beginning of the church, and here we are at the end of the church, how much more? Is it necessary for us, not even just to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but those of us who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, access him even more and more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Miss Tracy, I was sitting at my desk about two weeks ago, and I saw your face, and I saw myself just grabbing your hands and praying for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I just thank you for your gift. Father, I don't know all of why you showed me this, but Father, I'm trusting that I'm being obedient. And whatever your daughter needs, Father, I just transfer that to her. Father, I stir up at her. And this hour, critical, for her to know your voice and to follow you. And Holy Ghost, I thank you that you're her help. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord
There is no darkness because the light dwells in her and you are that light. And anything and everything that she needs to know, Father, I thank you that you show her. And establish and to stand firm and in her authority in this day, in this day, I thank you for it, Father. Help. Yeah, 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 yeah. your help. Holy one, your help. She's not alone. You are not alone. And there will be a performance. And there will be a performance. And you open up the way. Thank you, Lord. Everything, everything she needs. Thank you for it, Father God. Father, I just thank you. Hallelujah for us, every one of us. Father, come into a greater, greater knowledge of who lives on the inside of us, the divine genius that lives on the inside of us. Holy Ghost, we acknowledge you as the divine genius on the inside of us. Father, there is nothing that we can be in the dark on because the genius lives on the inside of us. And so, Holy Ghost, we ask you for your help. If there are things in our lives that we don't know about, we thank you for your help. We, we acknowledge acknowledge you in all of our ways and you will direct our paths. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy One, because you're bringing answers, bringing solutions to us. Everything that we need to know to traverse the end times, these last days, things that you've held in reserve for us, we access it right now by faith. Because we stir up on the inside of us. Because we stir ourselves up Ha-ha, on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost receiving instruction, receiving wisdom, receiving guidance on the inside. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for being our helper. Thank you for being our advocate, our standby, our strengthener. Hallelujah! The comforter. Hallelujah! We thank you, Holy Ghost. We even ask you to forgive us. Forgive us when we haven't accessed you more, when we try to do it in our own strength. Hallelujah! In our limited knowledge. But thank you, Holy One, for reminding us. Hallelujah. We got a divine guide on the inside. Hallelujah. And we know all things. Hallelujah. And that anointing, that unction is teaching us. Hallelujah. We used to sing this song. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. He is our comforter, our helper. On you I do depend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're dismissed.